Imagine walking through the historic halls where Pope Francis resides, filled with anticipation and curiosity. Suddenly news breaks. Pope Francis exposes shocking truth. Antichrist has officially arrived. Your heart races as you contemplate what this revelation means. For centuries, the Catholic Church has grappled with questions about the end times and the arrival of the Antichrist. With Pope Francis speaking out, the world is on edge, eager to understand who this figure might be and what it means for humanity. So let's dive into this video today to uncover the surprising truth behind Pope Francis' revelation and Christian beliefs about the Antichrist's arrival. Pope Francis, the leader of the Catholic Church, says the Antichrist is here, according to recent news. He's a man of traditional Christian beliefs and often talks about the end of the world known as eschatology. Pope Francis bases his beliefs on the Bible and what he calls divine revelations. He's worried that the Antichrist might cause harm to the world soon. The Antichrist is a figure from Christian beliefs about the end times. This idea comes from studying final events known as eschatology. Different Christian groups have different views about the Antichrist. Some think it's a person while others see it as a symbol of evil. The Bible, especially in books like Daniel, 1 John, and Revelation, talks about the Antichrist. It's often linked to apocalyptic prophecies. But not all Christians agree on who or what the Antichrist is. Some see it as a real person, while others see it as a symbol of evil forces opposing Christ. The term Antichrist appears in the letters of John, specifically in 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, Dear children, this is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 22, who is the liar? Whoever denies that Jesus is the Christ. Whoever denies the Father and the Son, this is the Antichrist. And in 2 John chapter 1, verse 7, For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Such a one is the deceiver and the Antichrist. These verses talk about people who reject the idea that Jesus is divine and go against Christian teachings. Throughout history, people have had different ideas about what these verses mean and who the Antichrist is. Different views, some interpretations see the Antichrist as a single future person who will represent evil and oppose Christ in a big showdown, often linked to the end times or the second coming. This view is common in certain branches of evangelical and fundamentalist Christianity. Scholars and theologians have tried to figure out if some historical figures or events match the Antichrist prophecies, leading to many different theories and speculations. Meanwhile, others see the Antichrist more symbolically. Instead of a single person, they view the Antichrist as representing anti-Christian ideas, false teachings, or oppressive systems that have existed throughout history. In this view, identifying the Antichrist is about recognizing manifestations of opposition to Christian beliefs. Beliefs about the Antichrist's arrival are often tied to Christian millennial thinking. Millennialism revolves around the idea of a thousand years associated with profound societal change or spiritual enlightenment. This concept has appeared in various religious and cultural contexts, often anticipating a significant event marking the culmination of history. Christian millennialism draws from interpretations of biblical passages, especially from the book of Revelation. This book contains apocalyptic visions that some interpret as predicting future events, including the coming of the Antichrist and the end times. Millennial beliefs shape how some Christians understand the arrival of the Antichrist and the events surrounding it, reflecting diverse interpretations and narratives within religious traditions. Millennium and religious beliefs, according to these beliefs, there is an expectation of a thousand years of peace and righteousness known as the millennium after apocalyptic events. This concept is closely tied to the second coming of Christ and is a prevalent theme in Christian millennial thought. Millennial thought is an exclusive to Christianity. Similar themes emerge in other major religions. In Islamic eschatology, there's the concept of Kiyayama, signifying the day of judgment and a period of significant societal upheaval. Strands of Hinduism and Buddhism also incorporate millennial ideas, envisioning cycles of ages with varying levels of virtue and enlightenment. Also, millennial ideas have transcended religious contexts. In the 19th and 20th centuries, secular and sociopolitical ideologies embraced millennialism. Various movements emerged with utopian visions of a new age, often tied to the arrival of a specific year or period. 
While distinct from religious counterparts, the secular millennial movements share a common thread of anticipating a transformative era. Throughout history, millennialism has been a pervasive aspect of human thought, influencing both religious and secular perspectives on the future. Further to understand millennialism, it's crucial to understand the wide range of interpretations and how these beliefs can differ. The specific details of the anticipated event, the millennium's core, and the associated timelines can vary significantly. This diversity reflects the different cultures, religions, and philosophies that have shaped human society throughout history. In simpler terms, millennialism represents a human tendency to search for meaning in the unfolding of time. People envision grand stories of significant change or enlightenment that go beyond the usual course of events. Exploring millennial types, there are various types of millennialism, each offering a unique perspective. These include premillennialism, postmillennialism, and amillennialism. Premillennialism is a type that revolves around beliefs about the sequence of events tied to the second coming of Jesus Christ and the establishment of his millennial reign on earth. In straightforward language, premillennialism suggests that Jesus will come back before a real 1,000 year period of peace and righteousness. Premillennialism brings a set of expectations, envisioning a series of events to unfold. According to this perspective, the first major event is the imminent return of Jesus Christ, often known as the Second Coming. It's important to note that this event is separate from the final judgment and the ultimate end of the world. Moreover, premillennialists anticipate that upon his return, Christ will set up a tangible and earthly kingdom. This reign is said to last for a thousand years, a concept derived from the Bible's book of Revelation. The core of premillennialism often rests on taking biblical prophecies quite literally, particularly those found in Revelation and specific passages in the Old Testament. Adherents of premillennialism emphasize a straightforward understanding of these texts, asserting that they foretell Christ's future earthly reign. In this view, the millennial kingdom is seen as a period of peace and justice, standing in stark contrast to the current state of the world. Premillennialism sets itself apart from other millennial views like postmillennialism and amillennialism, each offering its unique perspective on the sequence of events leading to the fulfillment of biblical prophecies. Postmillennialism presents a vision of Christ's return after a period of prosperity and righteousness on earth, often described as a golden age of Christian influence. On the other hand, a millennialism views the thousand-year reign mentioned in Revelation as symbolic rather than a literal period. According to this perspective, Christ has no specific earthly reign. Within premillennialism, there are additional distinctions regarding the timing of the rapture, a belief in which believers are taken to be with Christ. Dispensational premillennialism, a subset of premillennialism, introduces the idea of a pre-tribulation rapture. This suggests that believers will ascend to heaven before a period of tribulation on earth. Interestingly, while the term rapture isn't explicitly mentioned in the English Bible, the Greek Bible uses the word harpazo, which translates to rapture in English. Premillennialism has held a significant place in various branches of Christianity, particularly in evangelical and fundamentalist traditions, shaping their beliefs about the end times and Christ's return. The allure of premillennialism lies in its straightforward approach to interpreting biblical prophecies. It places significant emphasis on the anticipation of a tangible future kingdom of Christ on earth. While there might be variations in beliefs among premillennialists, the common thread is the shared expectation of Christ's return, heralding a millennial reign. Postmillennialism's optimistic perspective, postmillennialism being a form of millennialism, centers on interpreting biblical prophecies related to the end times and the second coming of Christ. It uniquely holds an optimistic view, suggesting that Christ's return will follow an extended era of spiritual prosperity and righteousness on earth. In contrast to other millennialist perspectives, postmillennialism envisions a positive future, anticipating a gradual and widespread acceptance of Christianity that leads to a golden age or millennial kingdom. At its core, postmillennialism is rooted in the belief that human efforts guided by the influence of Christianity will progressively enhance the world, fostering a global transformation. This optimistic outlook distinguishes postmillennialism within the broader landscape of millennialist perspectives.
Moreover, post-millennialism suggests that the impact of the gospel will extend far beyond individual salvation. It envisions the gospel permeating societal structures and institutions, leading to widespread societal change. Proponents of post-millennialism anticipate an era characterized by peace, justice, and moral righteousness, where the majority of the world's population embraces Christian principles. The term post-millennialism itself indicates the sequence of events according to this perspective. The prefix post suggests that Christ's second coming will occur after or after this prolonged societal improvement. This differs from premillennialism, which suggests that Christ's return precedes a literal thousand-year reign, and amillennialism, which often interprets the millennial kingdom symbolically. It also emphasizes the tangible and positive transformation of human society, Advocates of this perspective often cite biblical passages that speak to the growth and influence of the kingdom of God on earth. These passages convey a sense of the gradual victory of the gospel over evil and the expansion of God's reign in the world. It fosters a sense of hope and purpose among its followers. It motivates them to actively engage in efforts to improve society and promote Christian values. This optimistic interpretation of biblical prophecy encourages believers to work towards a better world. In contrast to premillennialism, which anticipates Christ's return before the establishment of a literal millennial kingdom, postmillennialism suggests that societal improvement will precede Christ's return. This sets it apart from other millennial views. Postmillennialism emerged as a distinctive theological perspective during debates over eschatology in the 17th and 18th centuries. It gained traction in certain Christian circles, particularly during the Enlightenment era. The broader sense of social optimism and progress during this period aligned well with the ideals of postmillennialism. A millennialism is a theological perspective within Christian eschatology that focuses on interpreting the millennium mentioned in the book of Revelation. Simply put, the A in a millennialism negates the literal interpretation of a thousand-year reign of Christ as stated in Revelation chapter 20 verse 1 to 6. Unlike other millennial views, our millennialists do not see this period as a literal thousand years during which Christ will physically reign on earth. Instead, they interpret the thousand year reign symbolically, representing an indeterminate but complete period, but complete period. This perspective emphasizes a more spiritual interpretation of the millennium, suggesting that Christ's reign is ongoing in a non-literal heaven. A millennialism highlights Christ's present spiritual reign over the hearts and lives of believers rather than foreseeing a future earthly kingdom. Advocates of a millennialism argue that much of the apocalyptic language in Revelation and Revelation and related biblical passages is symbolic, conveying spiritual truths rather than providing a precise chronological sequence of events. They often emphasize continuity between the Old and New Testaments, interpreting biblical prophecies in alignment with broader theological themes rather than constructing detailed timelines of future events. One key aspect of amillennialism is the belief that Christ's second coming will inaugurate the final judgment and the establishment of the eternal state rather than intermediate earthly millennial kingdom. This contrasts with premillennialism, which anticipates a literal thousand-year reign of Christ on earth before the final judgment. A millennialist argue that interpreting biblical prophecy requires considering the text's cultural, historical, and literary context. They approach the book of Revelation and related passages seeking spiritual and theological truths without insisting on a rigidly literal understanding of the thousand-year reign. The interpretations of millennial views can vary among Christian denominations and scholars. While providing a distinctive perspective, amillennialism coexists with other millennial views like premillennialism and postmillennialism, each offering its WN theological understanding of the culmination of history and the return of Christ. Differences in views on the millennial kingdom, premillennialists believe that Christ's second coming will happen before the establishment of the millennial kingdom. They anticipate a literal thousand-year reign of Christ on earth during which he will defeat evil forces, bring peace and righteousness, and rule physically from Jerusalem. This view emphasizes a chronological narrative of end times and events, drawing from biblical passages like Revelation. Postmillennialists expect the millennial kingdom to emerge gradually through the spread of the gospel and the influence of Christianity in the world. 
Unlike premillennialism, they believe Christ's second coming will happen after a prolonged spiritual prosperity and righteousness on earth. This view holds an optimistic outlook on the future, envisioning societal transformation through Christian principles. Throughout millennialism, the Antichrist has been predicted to take various forms. In premillennialism, the Antichrist is often seen as a singular future figure embodying evil and opposing Christ. Postmillennialists may interpret the Antichrist symbolically, representing anti-Christian ideologies or oppressive systems. Our millennialists, meanwhile, focus less on the Antichrist as an individual figure and more on spiritual interpretations of biblical prophecies. Also, postmillennialists believe that Christ's second coming will occur after spiritual and societal improvement. They envision a time when most of humanity will embrace Christianity, leading to peace and prosperity. Postmillennialism emphasizes the gospel's transformative power in shaping human society before Christ's return, fostering optimism about the future. Amillennialists take a symbolic and spiritual interpretation of the millennial kingdom. They argue that the thousand-year reign mentioned in Revelation is not a literal period but represents the entirety of the church age. In this view, the millennial kingdom is seen as Christ's present rule in the hearts of believers rather than a future earthly reign. According to amillennialism, the second coming will culminate in the final judgment and the establishment of the eternal state. Without a distinct phase following the millennial kingdom, these three millennial views differ fundamentally in their understanding of the chronological sequence between Christ's second coming and the millennial kingdom. While premillennialism anticipates a literal earthly reign of Christ after his return, postmillennialism and amillennialism offer alternative perspectives emphasizing spiritual and societal transformation preceding his coming. Postmillennialism envisions an era of societal improvement before Christ's second coming. In contrast, amillennialism emphasizes Christ's present spiritual reign without a distinct future earthly millennial period. These perspectives reflect diverse theological interpretations within Christian theology, contributing to the rich tapestry of eschatological thought. The Antichrist in biblical narratives. The biblical narrative portrays the Antichrist as a charismatic leader skilled in deception and manipulation, emerging in the end times. This figure is believed to wield significant political and religious influence, gathering followers who may be unaware of their leader's true nature. The Antichrist is often associated with global authority and is thought to incite conflict, chaos, and persecution. Some interpretations view the Antichrist as a singular individual, while others see it as a symbolic representation of various anti-Christian forces or ideologies opposing the teachings of Christ. These interpretations contribute to differing understandings of eschatological events and the role of evil in the end times. The flexibility in interpretation has led to various conceptualizations of the Antichrist throughout history. Beyond Christian eschatology, similar figures have emerged in different cultural and religious traditions. For example, in Islamic eschatology, the concept of al masiyah Dajjal, or the false messiah, bears similarities to the Antichrist. This figure is believed to deceive many with extraordinary powers, leading them astray from the true path. In secular context, the idea of an Antichrist-like figure is sometimes used metaphorically to describe political or ideological leaders perceived as embodying qualities of deception, authoritarianism, or manipulation. This metaphorical usage extends beyond religious frameworks, becoming a literary and cultural archetype symbolizing the epitome of evil or opposition to benevolent values. Throughout history, various figures such as Nero, Hitler, and other tyrants have been linked to the Antichrist archetype. This reflects a tendency to draw parallels between prophetic texts and contemporary events, illustrating how the concept of the Antichrist transcends religious boundaries and remains relevant in diverse cultural contexts. The adaptability in interpreting the Antichrist allows the concept to endure and transform, taking on new forms and resonating with diverse audiences across various cultural and religious landscapes. Impact of Pope Francis' revelation. Pope Francis' recent revelation regarding the arrival of the Antichrist has sparked a range of reactions globally. Delivered in his characteristic straightforward manner, the Pope's words have ignited discussions, contemplation, and varying levels of concern among people worldwide. As a prominent figurehead of the Catholic Church, Pope Francis wields significant influence, and his statements often carry weight beyond the religious community. 
Many individuals, especially within the Catholic faith, interpret the Pope's revelation as a call to heighten spiritual awareness. The notion of the Antichrist's arrival deeply entrenched in religious prophecies evokes a spectrum of emotions from fear to curiosity. Devout followers find themselves drawn to scriptures seeking a deeper understanding of the prophetic elements highlighted by Pope Francis's revelation. This revelation has sparked discussions within religious circles about the significance of these times and the potential implications for humanity. Some interpret it as a metaphorical expression rather than a literal anticipation of a supernatural figure. While many approach the Pope's announcement with openness, others view it skeptically or through a more secular lens. Skeptics question the interpretation of prophecies and emphasize critical thinking and contextual analysis. But Social media platforms have become key arenas for expressing diverse reactions to the revelation. Memes, jokes, and satirical content often emerge, reflecting the internet culture's tendency to process serious information through humor. Various theological perspectives emerge within religious communities, leading to nuanced discussions about eschatology, the Antichrist, and the end times. Different denominations interpret prophecies differently, contributing to rich and diverse dialogues, while some believers align closely with the Pope's interpretation, finding guidance in their spiritual leaders, others may diverge in their understanding, contributing to theological debates within their congregations. The Pope's revelation has prompted discussions about the intersection of faith and global events in broader society. It serves as a reminder of the enduring fascination with apocalyptic themes and the influence of religious figures on shaping perceptions of the future. Societal reactions to the Pope's words reveal a diverse tapestry of beliefs, doubts, and cultural influences. While some embrace the revelation with urgency and reevaluate their lives, others remain steadfast in their routines, acknowledging the revelation without drastic alterations to their perspectives. But the extent to which individuals integrate this revelation into their worldview varies significantly, influenced by personal faith, cultural background, and individual interpretations of religious teachings. So what do you think of the shocking truth about Antichrist by Pope Francis?